Welcome to the beginner's guide to Flexbox. Through developing a simple website example, I'm about to guide you through the essential Flexbox properties. You can see that I've already created the template ready to apply Flexbox. So Flexbox will be applied to the parent element. Therefore, these child elements, these five child elements here, can be known as the flex items. So we can apply flex CSS properties to both the parent and the child elements. So if I run that example in the browser, you can see that I've just got five block elements on top of each other. To assign flex to a parent container, I've included the CSS container display flex. So now looking at the example, I now have some inline blocks. So now with flex enabled, um, this is the example or the layout that I'm going to develop in this example. So we're going to have a header, footer, two side items and a main section in the middle. So we're now going to apply that to our design. First of all, we we'll create the divs needed for these separate elements. So now I know the layout of my page, I've changed the elements here to reflect my layout. So I'm going to have a header, two sidebars, uh, a main section in the middle and a footer. So we want a way of controlling the size of all these child elements. And we can do that by applying this CSS rule here. So we're going to select all the elements within the container the parent container here. So all of these elements here, and then we're going to apply the flex basics property um, at a hundred percent. So here I'm saying that all these, all these elements here, they should by default be a hundred percent of the width of the page. If we take a look at that example, we now have a, a line of words or child divs and we don't have any responsiveness at the moment. So if we view this in a responsive view, notice that we don't have any wrapping at the moment. So let's see if we can now get this to wrap with Flexbox. So by default, Flex tries to put all these elements on the same line. So therefore we need to utilize Flex wrap. So here we have wrap and we can also use wrap reverse. If we apply this to our page, we can now see that all our items, all of our elements are now been wrapped. Uh, so they're all underneath each other simply because they've all wrapped because we're utilizing flex basis and 100%. If we were to change this to, for example, 50, uh, this would be the scale of, of each element here or the width sorry, of each element. So if we go back and refresh that, you can now see that they're at 50%. So you can start to see how this is shaping up. So just looking at the example again, you can see that the header and the footer is pretty much all in place. So what we need to consider is how are we going to control these three elements here in the middle, the two sidebars and the main. Our sidebar is going to take up less space than the main section. So let's see if we can control the sidebars. So going back to the code, I've included now side and I've applied flex basis 50%. So if we go back into the example, we now have the two side elements taken up half the page each. Now I need to determine how much white space these middle elements need to have. So I do that with something called flex grow. So here I basically define a number one, two, three, four um, of how much space to take up. So in this instance, I want to have the sidebars flex grow one and then the middle is flex grow two. So two is indicating that it should take up twice the amount of white space of the width than the ones. So number two is twice the width of one. So going back into the code, you can see now I've included flex grow one to the side and then flex grow two to the main, indicating that it's going to take up twice as much of the space than the sidebars. Now, if we take back, if we go back into the example, 
uh, you can see that the sidebars are still the same and the main hasn't entered or is it on the same row as the sidebars yet because we've defined the sidebars as 50%. So we're going to need to use the magic auto option here. So by using auto instead of 50% here, it's going to mean that the main bar will take up its two space and then whatever's left, the sidebars are then going to utilize that space. So back in the code, I changed the flex basis to auto on the side. And then I also then create a flex basis auto on the main. Remembering that flex grow two on the main, so it's going to take up twice as much space than the sidebar. So now that should all fit on the same row. There we go. So now I need, or now I've got the problem of ordering. I need to change the order of this because I want the main section to be before this right side. So with Flexbox, I can manage the order of my elements using the order property. So here you can see that I've got header side left, side right, main footer. I've now gone ahead and created some more CSS for that and I've selected the order. So headers number one at the top, then the left hand side bar number two, and then the main section number three, right four, and then the footer is the last at five. So if we go back into the example now, you can see that we now have the correct order for our website. So I've added some background colors so we can clearly see the example now. So the next issue here is that when this scales down, you can see that by scaling the page, um, it's not gonna look very good in a mobile view. So we're gonna need some sort of breakpoint whereby these sides need to collapse or um, be removed so that smaller screen sizes can view our page more effectively. So if we just go back to um, where we started from, we initiated the container with flex and then we applied to all the child elements um, flex basis 100% to stretch the whole screen, the width of the screen. So really what we're looking for in mobile view we kind of want it to be um, a bit like that on top of each other. So one thing that we might need to do is just change the main. So it goes below the header. So we can do that by just um, removing this and putting it where we need to put it. So um, the main above the sides. So that should um, put it into the order that we want to choose. Um, and then what I guess we can do now is utilize the app media in order to, when it gets to a certain size, it then breaks into the shape that we want for a larger screen. So here's a simple solution. Um, so app media all and min width 600. So when the screen breaks 600 and above, it's just gonna go into this uh, section of code here. So let's not forget the final. No. Okay. Yep. Okay. Um, so it will then move into the sidebars of then flex basis auto. So they're going to go 50 50 um, or utilize the space that's left and then flex grow one. And then, of course, our, our main section is going to be flex grow two. And that should then nicely put them into the shape we want. So if we go back here, um, you can see that we're currently at five, four, eight. Now, uh, this is telling me the fact that it's not working. It's in the wrong space. So here's a simple solution. So I've removed the block of code. Just leave me with the, the initial container setup. So fl display flex initially, and then we've wrapped the items. And then we applied to all the child um, elements, 100% um, width. And if we just view that on the screen, then this is what we have. So you can imagine at a smaller screen size, um, that is probably what we're gonna need.
I also moved the position of the main div. So I've taken and moved the main div to where I need to be in this logical order. So that's what's going to be viewed at um, the, the lower resolution. So if I put back my code I had uh, and put it inside a an app media, uh, so min width, I'll just put 800. Uh, so when the screen is screen size is below 800, it's just going to go back to what you just saw. So it's going to look look like that. But when the screen uh, resolution width uh, moves over 800 pixels, then it's going to apply this style. So this style um, is what we had before. So we set the side items to auto and we enable flex grow. And then the main item we had flex grow to, so it's going to be double the size of the sides and then flex basic zero pixels. And then we've set the order also, which we want to have for the different sub or child elements here. So that's going to be applied when the screen size reaches 800 and above. So going back to our example, I'll just refresh. So now we're over 800. So when we get back into a smaller screen size, there we go, it folds. Now, of course, you can make the breakpoints um, any way you like by changing uh, the min width here. Maybe you have two breakpoints. Maybe you want the side bars to go into 50-50 first before they then go into 100% of the width. Um, obviously, there's a few options there, but that was a simple example of utilizing Flexbox to create um, what is a, a very simple basic shape.